uh, the founder and CEO of uh, Ella Hidden. You wrote eight books. Like you really did a lot of things, but the first question that really came to my mind is like, what was the moment uh, that made you realize that an agency for women was needed? Like that you were like, oh, this is like a market need. Like there is something that is is not right. Uh, good afternoon, hello everyone. I'm so happy to be here. I'm feeling like a rock star. Very <laughs> nice. <laughs> Well, I think many, many projects begin when you see something around that you don't like. And from that point, like, like uh, you feel it in your guts. It's like, I don't like this, uh, there must be another way of doing it, or, or I just make it up. No? So I think many startups and many businesses begin like this. Mm -hmm. In my case, it was kind of 20 years ago, I realized that, yeah, because not being feminist now is kind of cool. <laughs> Please don't uh, give up of being feminist. You have to be feminist anyway. But 20 years ago it was really uh, uh, extravagant somehow. So I, I need to go with that positioning. Mm -hmm. um, I think 20 years ago I, I realized I was aware that they didn't like how brands talk to us, talk to women. I didn't like how uh, advertising was uh, selling the products and what messages were getting through. So I thought, I don't like this. I don't like how these companies are talking to me. I don't like that products have to be pink because they are for women. I don't like those messages that they don't break the, the, the stereotypes. And I thought there must be another way of doing it. And if there is not, I will work to create it. So that, that's the beginning of it as the 20 years ago, already. Okay, wow. And normally which kind of like companies approach your, uh, your agency? Are more like startup, large oh. corporation? Well, Francesca, um, as you may imagine, uh, well, the, the, the message now gets through really fast and really easy and it's like that, I feel like now is the right moment for that message which I'm happy not to have uh, given up before. <laughs> but I've been really like, like, uh, um, uh, picar piedra, Victor, how do you say that in English? <laughs> picar piedra. I think we can if get I say it. picar piedra, they don't get it. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> well, you get it, right? Picar piedra means like, come on, another time, another time, like seducing somebody, kind of. So, um, I still, me and my team, we have to really still like get the message through and call the companies. It's okay. still, so still. it's more a reach out. It's, you you have to go there. We I have to publish a lot of articles. I have to be like uh, active, active, an activist at the same time to explain what is the the importance of really creating a feminist brands and giving that. Uh, approach to, to the advertising and branding still. Um, so maybe next generation, the, the next Gemma, the next uh, generation will be easier. But now it's easier than, of course, than 20 years ago, but still you have to get the message through, you have to be there, be there, be there. Because <clears throat> companies get, they know that we make, women make 80% of the purchasing power. They, they, People, companies, the society understands that. But if they keep on selling, they say like, "Ah, oh, but I'm still. I mean, the business yes. goes okay, so they don't like they don't really change many things. And if there is a startup or um, uh, maybe a young uh, company with um, uh, more uh, fast to react and more more quick, yeah. and then they already begin the business with that approach, with that feminist." Um, uh, concept, so they already get that message through, and the big monster of the big companies like, oh, they are doing that. So maybe then it's too late to react. But still, uh, if you sell, it's like, ah, oh, but I'm selling. See, so if I sell, I know that I should be more um, fem with more feminine uh, approach. But if I'm, my business goes okay, I I won't change it until somebody yeah. does, and then they react. Okay. But 
And then which, Francesca, which companies call us? Um, it's more a matter of mentality than a, than a matter of which kind of company. Okay. It, uh, because we've, been, we've done things for, uh, I don't know, for Vela, um, uh, PlayStation, nothing to do one with the other one, and I don't know, Ferrocarril Personalidad, nothing. I mean, so it's more a matter of setting that, that um, prime like mindset and saying, okay, I want to go this way, I want to have this impact on gender than the kind of company. Yes. Okay, okay cool. And like uh, during this year, what was the, the biggest mistake or the most common mistake that you saw? Like that advertisement that you were like, oh my god, I cannot believe that still we are like seeing this kind of advertisement, like so uh, against um, the feminism and the like, yes. I like very much this question, Francesca, because you know what? You can donate or you, you cannot. It's up on you, but it's not registered, so it's fine. We can uh, share, you're a small group. I, I'm going to give you two examples. Now, of course, I, I'm going to say the name, but in a, in a, in a constructive way. Because, Absolutely. Yeah, no, no, I mean, uh, sometimes um, we are not aware of the mistake we're making until somebody says, no, but you know what? We don't like that. That's not the way. It's not there. So if you're saying with respect and humble, there's a way to rethink and construct better. That's the only way. So two examples. One, um, Casio. Is there anyone from Casio, the company that makes the calculadora? How do you say calculadora in English? Calculator, of course. Yes. I love English. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's like, can, you put the accent and it's kind of, kind it's of working. Kind of, kind of, but always like this. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> Casio. Okay. They were so creative and they need the calculator for women. You know, what did they do? What did they do? Think, of course! Oh my god. The thing is that they spend really a lot of money for that. There is some marketing like research. Thinking research. Like, and so those guys, they get money for that. And there is a, a budget of. Uh, uh, to do the, 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 the packaging and somebody <laughs> doing the advertising and somebody doing the campaigns and the calculator is the same one. It's not that they think maybe we use an, a, one model better than another one or really like really in you know, a feminine design or maybe the fingers. I don't know. I mean, there's nothing else. Just pink. Just pink. And, 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 and I find this insulting. Really, I do. Because, because they don't... They don't really think of women as the decision makers. They think like, oh, if you do that, we'll sell more. We'll sell. We will sell more, and that's not true. And and it's a shame that there is a lot of money that goes to uh, trash because the product they don't sell more for that. They just they do the marketing campaign, but they don't sell more for doing the pink thing. And uh, data and uh, the only three percent of women they say that the color they like the most is pink. Is so let's break the stereotypes, let's break the, the topics. And, and just to give you an example on this, sorry for yes. the wrap, no, no, like no, every yes. time I go and look for like a sportive cloth, like the female line is all pink and purple. What if I like to dress in green? Like this is something I found crazy. Like if there is someone wearing for decathlon or like any other like sporty clothing, please take this point because I think it's very important. It is, uh, and, and of course, I do like pink color, and but that's not the matter of pink or not. The matter of I I I don't like that. Um, we simplify women in pink. No, it's much more than that. So, and and actually, we don't like pink that much. So imagine. And 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 I want to give this example. I love giving this example. If anybody has already listened to me before, Victor has, and um, Josie has, and, and Juliet, and maybe some somebody else. But uh, um, okay, 
I did the study of advertising, that's my like uh, my academic background, it comes from advertising. And and I cannot understand how uh, you, you are thinking that I'm gonna be like get angry, right? I'm getting angry by the way. Uh, I cannot understand how a marketing director of of course it, it has to be a man, it cannot be a woman. Um, I, I, I I don't say that well too. I yes, I do it I say it sarcastically. Um, uh, Evax, you know Evax, the brand name for, for feminine uh, tampons? Yes, tampons, yes. Uh, of course it has to be a man who, who created that campaign because um, when we have the period, the last thing, I promise, the last thing we want to do is to wear a short white pant <laughs> oh, yeah. and jump. Uh, come on. It's like, please, who is this advertising for? And who is this advert for? And, and I, I'm sure the, the guy who runs the marketing, the marketing department of Evax, uh, it has to be a man, because, or the advertising agency, because for us, when we see, I don't know, I would like to, love, to listen to the opinions of the other woman in the, in the, in the room. Uh, we don't feel like doing this. No. We don't want to jump. We don't even want to wear white just in case, you know. So when you see that campaign, it's, I find it insulting. It's like, come on, it's jumping, like, riding yeah. a horse. No way, it's no way. Stay on the couch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, so that that's a lot to rethink and a lot to break because I I do give also classes in in Bellaterra and the university in, in a master of. Uh, guys who just finished advertising and they do like a little bit more of the master's degree. And, and I see how, what they teach. I studied advertising th 30 years ago and they still teach the same. I don't know if there is anybody else from advertising in this room. But from <coughs> advertising, oh no, not bad. But, but, <laughs> but uh, they still teach advertising, advertising as creating um, a brand using a uh, um, Aspirate like a brand. I want to buy this brand because it's aspirational. What I do is, if I use that brand, I'll be uh, sexier, I'll be richer, I'll be more successful, whatever. It's aspirational. But what I what I try to teach to these students in the master's degree, and actually what we resonate women is brands that work with values that brings you to the inspirational. I use this product, I use that, that um, I want to have this experience because it's going to inspire me in doing something better, in feeling better, or in giving a better impact in society. So imagine when you think it's aspirational or inspirational, that changes your mindset. And so the strategy is absolutely different. And they still teach that. It's like, come on, teachers. We don't, I mean, wake up, throw the books and create the new ones. So, yes, AVAX, come on. No, yeah, they can probably do better. Of course, and it's a shame because it, sometimes it's, it's just not to repeat the stereotype. It's, it's um, be authentic. It's not that easy being, to be authentic, but, but we want, and you guys too, but of course we women want brands that resonate with us with the authenticity that what I, I see that so that's you know, I could be there doing that. Okay, yeah, and talking about this, I think one of the most of your companies always look at the feminine side. So like indeed, how is different for you the communication towards women if you compare it to what towards men? Like I also saw you wrote down like a decalogue of rules yes. to always keep like the a feminist positive communication. So which are the let's say the, the pillar of this decalogue? What what is the difference between communicating to women and men? Uh well um is um okay. I, I I when I wrote the decalogue that you can down you can download it from my blog, elastedident.com um it's in English too Spanish and English. When I wrote that decalogue, um, I I call it the feminine decalogue. The I'm sorry, the decalogue. The decalogue is the decalogue, Victor. Suena fatal, eh? <laughs> decalogue of the feminine communication. Um, not because it's exclusive for women. 
because I don't want to play what I don't like that the other side do. So, but I had to say feminine to to differentiate it from the way branding and communication was being done. So I thought maybe if I call it feminine, that means that it's the other way. At least it takes into account what we resonate with and what we really uh, stand for. So there, there are ten values and um, uh, that. They resonate with you guys too, boys and I mean men. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the 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 important thing is that they do really connect with women. So if they connect with women, they will connect with men too, because we expect much more from experiences, much more from brands, much more from products. We we, we look for many many things to say yes, that's my product. And so, if we like, if we connect with women, we will connect with men for sure. So let's. So the values I'm gonna say now, I'm not gonna say all of them, just some of them. Then we have to look for them. Um, they connect with you as well, men as well. So for instance, empathy, humanity, transparency, um, uh, personalization. We like products. We like messages that I feel like one-to-one, -one, I feel that they are talking to me, not they are talking to a crowd of people. And a disconnect with men too, it's not a, a feminine or a women thing, but of course, uh, when a brand talks to me that way, complicity, I feel uh, that this brand really is talking to me, looking at me. Okay, yes. so there are no like, some specific rules just for the, let's say, feminine like, no, I, I, oh, I, in, from the strategic point of view, the, the, the inspirational and aspirational thing, I think this is a big difference because from the start, from the moment you, you create a strategy, you have to think differently. Um, there is another thing that, that I, I explained, but it's not, it, I didn't invent it. it. It was created by uh, uh, like my guru of marketing to women, she, her name is Marty Barletta, and she's from Chicago, the States. And she, I love this, I want to share that with you. She says that we women decide and think um, in a spiral, and you men decide and think in vertical. Um, I would say the majority of us, of the two genders, the majority, not, not, not like men and women, because personally, in my case, I think I am more vertical than spiral, I think. But I'm going to explain it and then you, you, you decide if you are more feminine or more masculine. Um, okay, imagine that, that I want a uh, red blouse. Okay, so a woman, a woman, sorry, a woman would um, search the fashion blog she likes the most, will ask her friends, uh, where did you get the blouse? I love that. We'll go to the, sh to the, um, to the shop she normally goes and ask, oh, do you have the same one but in red? Uh, she will do the S spiral, you see? Those things. Oh, I like the one you wear, where did you get it from? Da, 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 da. The spiral can take three hours or three weeks, but there is an S spiral, you see? Da, 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 da. A man, the majority, because in my case, I think I am more men than women in my case, but it's like, oh, I need uh, a tie. At lunchtime, I'll go to Albert Inglés and I'll get the tie. So it's more, it's more vertical, and the women, the way women decide, and it, it is um, proved uh, like with data that is like this. I'm not, I'm not just saying that because okay, Marty Barletta says that in Chicago, but of course I'm open to to accept that some men, some men may be more spiral and some women may be more vertical, of course, but like the majority, I don't know what do you think, but we go, ask, check, yeah. compare, and then decide. Yeah, let's go, let's do you go like a study. Let's yes. go like a study. So how many in the audience feel more spiral? Yes. <laughs> Hello, okay. how many of you feel more vertical? Okay, so I don't mind. Like I can see, I like, <laughs> your, your theory was 100% uh, good. Like, I can okay. see, like, in the, in the audience, more women raising their hands. Yes, yes, exactly. So, so, okay, knowing this is better and vertical, uh, if we know that, 
the way we are going to decide the campaign is absolutely different because I have to be in those different things, the places where the, the spiral goes. I don't have to be only in the court place. I have to be in the blog, the fashion blog, I have to be in the open stream, I have I have to create the word of mouth in um, social media. I have to be in all those places where the spiral goes. It's easy, right? So, so for, I mean, you understand to do this, but obviously. <laughs> but yes, Francesca, so like those okay. two things, strategically, those two things are really like big things to, to, okay, to keep into consideration yes. when you're uh, doing a marketing campaign. Okay, that's super cool. I didn't know about this theory. Okay, my question um, is about, okay, now we talk about communication for women, communication for men, that the end can be also put together, but I think now more and more there are people that do not feel represented in one yeah. or the other, so let's say not binary. Uh, how is the communication and marketing also approaching this, this new target that I think also more and more in the future here will, will become for me prominent or like will grow for sure? Francesca, I have to accept that in, in our team and in our case, we, we, we are concerned and aware of that, but we are not still uh, really working on that because, um, of course, it's obvious that, 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 uh, that not binary realities in the street, that's for sure that it is. But still, uh, since the companies are not really working on the feminine you know, side, so, so you see this as a further next I, step. I see it as a further, not that far away. Okay. I see it as 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 a as a, as a way of uh, growing the business as well. Business as as the, as the uh, meaning the, the the way of being in the market. Of course, somebody has to begin that message and begin this position. But uh, we're not still working on, on that. So okay. there is plenty to do, yes. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Francesca. Um, so, uh, next question. Uh, I remember in an interview, you mentioned that the moment that you were called like in a decision-making role or like in a job of authority, the majority of the time it was because a man called you in, right? So like thanks to the support of someone that like first of all, like appreciate what you were doing, and then decided to to bring your more bring you to the table. Reality is this is still that there are still many men in decision making roles, uh, but as you mentioned, I don't think this should be something that is women fighting for women or like always uh, being women trying to make everyone understand that there is a parity between the gender. Uh -huh. So, like, how do you think we can bring more men on board and make it more like a matter of like women rights and gender human rights? So, how to also have like also the other gender supporting like this uh, this cause? Wow, um, many problems in one, Francesca. Okay, um, first thing. Um, for you to understand how important is communication and how important are the words, the words we use. I love this audience for many things, but for one thing, because it's men and women, I would say parity, or maybe more men than women. And I don't know, I don't know, but quite, and, and you know maybe why, Victor? Maybe, because we didn't put, we put, Yes, we put women in, in the we put women in, in the in the in the invitation, but it was not directed like for women. So we have to really take care of how we communicate uh, events when we want to like promote the other side or balance. You see, because uh, we may in the way we communicate it, in the way we use the words and we put the words, we may uh, reject men, and we don't want, we need. We do really need um, you men uh, supporting us and feeling really feminist. We, we women want men feminist because that's cool, that's necessary, and that's important, and that's freedom. So, yes, uh, 
I, I know that you didn't uh, ask that, but I'm going to no, answer no, no. it. Okay. I think it's an important point. Absolutely. Yes. Um, feminism combines um, freedom, democracy, and, and equality. I mean, that's it. And who doesn't want to go for that? We all want to go for that. So we, we, all, we all want to feel and be feminist. So it's very important how we use the words when we create events, even if it's to promote women or the feminine side or whatever, because we need you guys with us in this research and in this um, dance, in this tango. It takes two to tango, and we need the two of us. And, um, okay, Francesca, you asked me that. In, in my career, when I have been um, asked to have a leading role, always, 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 it has been a, a, a man who has asked me to go to that position, to that place. And I want to say two things. One, yes, man, men of the room, ask when you think of promoting uh, somebody in your business, think always with a a uh, woman and a man, and, and ask women to go that there as well. And to women in the room, when somebody asks you to go to a position, a um, decision-making position, say yes. Even you don't know how to. Don't, I mean, who cares? <laughs> we don't care. No, no, no. We don't care. But say yes, and then look then for you learn, no? um, yes, yeah. and look for our lives, and, and look, and, 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 and be honest, and say, yeah. Thank you for ask me, asking me to do that. I'm going to do it. I don't really know how to, but I'm going to do it. And, yeah, so, because we need to change the picture, all of us. We need to change the, out, the outcome. And it's, it takes two to tango. You know? Yeah, no, I think this is very important. I remember I saw a study that was showing that for like application, like for a job, like men are more likely to apply, even if they don't have all the skills. While women, even if they have 90% of them, they're like, yeah. oh no, I'm not yeah. qualified for that. Yeah, yeah. So it's really also a bit of a poker, right? Like, yes. you should try it. But being honest, it's not like I don't want to pretend what I don't yeah. know. No, I say thank you for, for proposing me that uh, exciting um, uh, that position. I want to do it, but I need help. Good. So we don't have to pretend. We, we can accept and be humble as well. So, so yes. And we need allies. I always say that Victor is, I'm sorry to say Victor that many times, but it's true. Victor is a, is a, is a real ally. All the women in the room, if, we know, if you know Victor, you know that always when, when we uh, promote projects and when, when we um, Whatever we do, when do when we do events, he's there, he's in the net, he's in the social media promoting the events, promoting women. So we need allies. We we need um, men that think as women because uh, it's the only way to really open the scope. The only way to really see the the importance of showing the feminine. Um, side. Side. Yeah. Yes. And talking about this like balance between men and women, so many studies, I think the last I read was from Harvard Business Review, showed that both like in VC, like majority of the work, working VC are men and majority of entrepreneurs are men. So like the their presence is not really rebalanced in the case. Yeah, uh, I think we're talking about like three percent of the lead uh, by women that receive funding and around the 15% that is actually work in the VC industry. And of course this also creates a fact that if I if I am a man, I'm more prone to sign a check for someone that is similar to me, so probably another man. So this creates this vicious circle. You are an entrepreneur and also like you invest in companies. So how do you think this can like change, like how to push women to be more like in the in one side or the other. So mm -hmm. like go for uh, working as a venture capitalist or like being an entrepreneur. Like what can we do? How can we support that? Uh, 
well, at the stage we are now, I would say that we have to force it. Yeah. So, forcing it means that, um, like the quotas, I mean, in the stage we are now, we have to force it means that we have to really like look for projects starting out by women or look for um, uh, leadership uh, done by women or look for um, business angels, women business angels, because we have to force it. It, it, it. it will not come naturally, unfortunately, not yet. Maybe in one generation it will, but we have to force it a little bit. But then in this case, you don't risk to take away the marriage from women. Like, I don't know, like, for example, in big companies now, indeed, there is the rule that the management team needs to be 50-50, and when, like, a lady got a promotion, it's like, oh, yeah, she got promoted, not because she's good, that she sure is, but just because it's a woman, so... Uh, it's not popular what I'm going to say, but... But... But say, it's weird. Sit in the small group, no one is. Well, no, it's being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in Los Angeles will see it, right? Is there <laughs> uh, okay. I know that maybe uh, we 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 leave great talent on the uh, field. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, we may. Yeah, that's a risk. But the, there are a lot of. Uh, um, what's the word? Um, men not doing the best of their job in like making decisions. So and nobody questioned that. So it's not that I want to um, like lower the level because I, who cares if they are good or bad? Or somebody is better than the, than the one you are promoting it because it's a woman. Um, I'm 100% sure that when a woman gets to the point that can compete with a man for that position, she has the, 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 the talent and the quality and the level for that. I'm 100% sure. So she's not there by chance. She's not there by chance, for sure. And and we all know, I mean, the thing is that since the norm is masculine and the way the business and the companies have been created are, have been um, uh, done in the masculine way and because that's the way it, it, it was and it is, it's, that's not anybody's fault. That's not good or bad. That's the way it is. So now we have to force the other side because if not, it will always be the same. We have to question the status quo. Like, why it has always been like this, it doesn't mean that it's the correct way to, to do it. No? And, and we have to uh, dance together. It's not that we want to occupy men's place. No, we want to occupy our place. It's not men's place or women's place. It's, it's like this. No? It's, it, and, and actually, the outcome is going to be much better, for sure, because the population is 50 and 50. So. All the process has to be done by 50 and 50. You, I mean, it's it's really logical. Yeah, and I agree with you. And since we're mentioning this, I had many questions to ask you about the women that invest, but I think we're a bit running out of time. Yes. So my question here would be to name one angel investor, women, to come to the next interview. So that we can go deeper in that. Okay. With like a okay, wonderful. Okay. So when, when you want me to name it now? If you want, you can think about it. If someone came to your mind at this moment, you can name it now. Uh, a woman angel investor. Actually, it comes to my mind. Regina Lopez. Which do you know? Regina Lopez. She's in the STEAM sector. Okay. STEAM. Yeah. Victor is saying yes with his head. So you know Regina? Regina? She's like a big. A big fish, I was going to say, yeah, I don't know what, what did I say, fish, because a shark, I don't like shark. <laughs> <laughs> but she's amazing, she's a friend of mine, but I can't think of more. Okay, okay, okay then you can create the song title. Is that it? Is that it? No, I would like to ask you one more question. Ah, okay. Like, I know you are uh, involved in this uh, foundation that is actually supporting women to a second chance after being in prison, and I found it something amazing. And yeah, I would like to ask you, first of all, how can we help as a community? 
So as the Victor said at the beginning, Southern Bright is first of all a community of people that want to help each other. So if like there is a way that we can contribute, donate, like act for you, uh, please let us know. And yeah, like telling us a bit of the activities you're running with the foundation. Thank you, Francesca. I I I am the the word patronato. Patronato. I am the patronato. Okay, you understand that? Like in the, the social governance. Or, 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 or this in a private business, no? Ah, you see the same? Okay. I am in the Patronato of uh, Aret Foundation. Actually, the, the foundation itself, physically, it's it's from here. It's in Mentira Zaroa. And what we do in Aret, A-R-E-D, Aret Foundation, we help women that get out from jail and we we uh, educate them and we teach them how to sew, how to cook, some uh, profession, and we help them to find a job and to dignify her lives again and to have like a new opportunity. It's an amazing foundation. I've been in the Patronato for four years now, more than four years now, and you just fall in love with the, this Patronat, with this project, and you cannot stop helping them. So we do caterings as well because it's the way we, we, we can make money to pay all the effort to help those women. So if you think of doing any um, catering in your house or in your family, in your, in your business, in your, with your friends, whatever, it's a, it's a great catering. You, I think, I don't know if you, Victor, if somebody in the room have tried the catering um, by Aret, but it's really, really good. Um, so that's a way you could help, for instance, um, and many other things, but, but yes, I did um, A-R-E-D, foundation.org. Amazing, thank you so much. much. So I guess before we open for the Q&A, you have like a little lottery to play. That is, a, do, do you all read Spanish? Yeah. No? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, this is my last book. It, it, it's already a four years ago book, but that's the last one. I've been lazy writing. Uh, the title is Atrapados en el Feminismo, uh, Trapped in Feminism. Uh, okay, I'm going to make one question. The one who, who knows the answer will get the book. It's something, it's something that I said, so I'm going to check if it's something <laughs> to me or not. I could ask like the easiest one, but I uh, there must be five or ten uh, arms up. I don't know. Um, who knows the uh, what, which is the person that um, the um, uh, which is the the well yes the person that of um, the power of women deciding in place two. I'm sorry, I didn't say it to no. you. may have read it. <laughs> <laughs> you said they did. Anybody else knew that it was you, Pep? I know you know Pep, but you didn't say anything. Um, no, okay. You, she, what's her name? Anna. Anna, Anna said, the, said it first, so the book has to go for Anna. But I, if, I, if you only keep one thing from this interview, please remember that, okay? <laughs> 80% of the purchasing power is done by women. So that explains everything. Yeah. Thank you very much. So thank you very much.